In this video, we are looking at hypothesis testing, which is part of the AI course in topic four, statistics and probability. And this whole subtopic is called hypothesis testing. And it's a very good subtopic, this one, very, very useful in statistics. Uh, in this video, we are covering the content that is in the SL and HL course. And then there is another video on further hypothesis testing just for HL students. Now, I've decided to stay at a pretty high level for this video to go into all the detail for all the various parts of hypothesis testing would take too long and I think that also the best way to learn this is to practice questions so the aim of this video is just to give an understanding conceptually of what we're actually doing highlight the different types of questions the way to think about them and then I highly recommend going and practicing some of them because if you practice how to do say a test of independence or a comparison between two means, you'll like, you start to understand and see the process. So this video, we're gonna stay at a pretty high level. Okay, so in the SL and HL course, you'll encounter three types of hypothesis testing questions. And they are conducting t-tests to compare the means of two populations. So for example, if we took two classrooms of students, both with say 25 students in each, and we wanted to compare, say, the exam scores between those two classes. And we wanted to decide, is there a difference in the average between those two classes? Now, if we calculated it, there might be a small difference. But then we need to decide, is that difference by chance? Or is there actually a difference between the exam scores and the capability of students between the two classrooms? That's what this t-testing and player means is all about. Is the differences happen, happening by chance or is there actually a statistically significant difference? Okay, the second type of question is a chi-squared test of independence, which is about deciding are two variables independent or is there a relationship? And the example that I like to use is an ice cream shop. If we look at the temperature of the day and the number of ice creams sold, does the number of ice cream sold change depending on the temperature? Now, you kind of think that, well, yes, it would. The hotter the day, the more ice cream sold, but we're not sure that. So we need to conduct a chi-squared test of independence to determine whether the changes day to day, is it random or does it actually depend on the temperature? That's what that one there is all about. The third type of question is called a chi-squared goodness of fit. Now, this is about are the outcomes that we see by conducting a test, say let's take a survey, is that in proportion to what we expect or is there a bias? Now the example that I like to use here is, let's say we flip a coin 100 times, we would expect there to be say 50 heads and 50 tails. But what if the actual results were more like 55 heads and 50 and 45 tails? We need to determine that difference from the expected. Did that occur by chance or is there actually a bias in this coin that we're flipping? That's what this third part is all about. Now, for all three of these types of questions, we progress through the same general process. Just the second step here is different. So the process is step one, we define the null hypothesis and then also the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis, that's the important one. That's the status quo. So back to our classroom example, our null hypothesis would be that there is no difference between the average scores. The chi-squared test of independence is that the two variables are independent. The number of ice cream sold does not depend on the temperature. Or the chi-squared goodness of fit is, the coin is not biased, we should expect even outcomes between heads and tails. We define this status quo, the null hypothesis. Step two is to conduct a test. Now the test varies depending on which type of question we have here. And on our calculator, it can do all three of the tests. So we're either gonna use number four, a two sample t-test, that's for the t-test type. A chi-squared goodness of fit test, that's for number three or a chi-squared two-way test. That's for the chi-squared test of independence. So again, you're probably gonna to have to try a few questions here to understand how to input the data, but basically step two is to conduct a test using your calculator. 
Step three, we now want to assess the results and decide, and and this is the important question to think about, and I recommend repeating this and thinking about it. Is the probability of the occurring of of hate, or sorry, the null hypothesis occurring by chance so unlikely that we reject it in favor of the alternative hypothesis. So for all three of these tests, we will get what's called a p-value, which stands for a probability. Now what that probability represents, this p-value, and, and it's a decimal, it's the probability of the null hypothesis occurring by chance, in other words, the, the, the probability of the null hypothesis being true. Now, of course, the smaller the probability of the null hypothesis being true, the more likely that we're going to decide, mm, it's too unlikely, we're gonna reject the null, the null hypothesis. Now, the logical question is, well, how small does the probability need to be in order to reject it? And the answer that, to that question is, well, we compare it against the significance level. And for all three of these questions, you'll be given a significance level. Usually it's 5% or 10%. So if the probability is less than the significance level, that's the point in which we go, hmm, okay, it's too unlikely for this to occur. I'm going to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. So that's the general process there. Always work your way through these steps, define the null hypothesis, conduct the test, and then assess the results. Is the probability null hypothesis so small that we reject it? Now there's more detail in there and and, and each of these three different types, you'll need to understand how to sort of set up your data and your calculator. But I recommend going through and practicing probably at least three of these different types of questions. And by the end, you'll understand how to identify what question type it is and then how to go about solving it. Okay, best of luck.